We talked about it coming into this game. That these next couple are must wins if this Raptor team wants to get any sort of good seed heading into the play-in. Well, defensively, they were lost. Offensively, they were terrible to start. And it was the story of the night. They lose 119-108 to the Washington Wizards. And just like that, the Wizards are now tied with the Toronto Raptors. Actually, I think they might be ahead of us because they uh, they have one less loss than we do. We have a couple more wins, so I don't know how that's going to work when it comes to, to seeding and whatnot. But, um, but we'll check that out right now. Now, let me see if I can find that for you guys, all right? Uh, with the I don't know if they've changed the standings as of yet, so let's see. Uh, they haven't. They haven't. So, with them having one less loss, I think they would jump the Raptors, which means we would be in the 10th seed. You play this same team on Saturday at 5. You must win that game. And what do I, why do I say that? Well, let me read the rest of the schedule for the Toronto Raptors. They have 18 games remaining, I believe, after tonight. Let me go through the tough teams. And we can all do math. Well, I'm not going to be able to do it. You guys do it because you know how that goes. You play the Nuggets twice. You play the Clippers. I don't care that the Lakers are, are, aren't that great this season. You know, they're play, they're, you're playing in LA. So there's a tough one. Four. You got the Bucks on the road. You got the Heat at home, which I don't, they're, they're still a damn good team. Philly in Philly. Celtics two more times. Bucks. That is 10 of your 18 games that are damn tough. And then it's assuming you win every other one. You got Charlotte twice. You got the Wizards another time at Scotiabank Arena on March 26th. You got the Pistons. You have the Pacers. Uh, T Wolves. How have they been? I haven't seen, they're, they're 500. So again, nothing guaranteed there. Uh, OKC's fallen off a cliff, but again, they've given the Raptors trouble. These games against the Wizards, not saying you should win them, but if this Raptor team wants anything good, they have to win these games. They did not today, and let's break it down. First quarter, it was not good defensively. And I, people are going to look at it and say, well, what are you talking about? They only had 24 points. Well, if you watched the game, you saw that it was a 10-0 run to start the game for the Wizards, all 10 were Kyle Kuzma. Then the Raptors answered. They went on like a 12-2 run of their own. At one point, I think they were up by four uh, in the in the game in the game in that first quarter. And we're like, all right, they found their shot. They're getting stops. They're in good shape, right? Biggest lead of the night for the Raptors was six. So I believe they they might have gone up to six at that one point in the first quarter. They end up going dry the rest of the quarter. It was a game of runs in the early goings, and they lead by four at the end of the first quarter. 24-20. Then in the second quarter, the defense starts to implode. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was watching this contest, how many times were there breakdowns defensively where we have Scotty and Pascal or Pascal and Jakob or, 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 or OG and Jakob looking at each other like, where, where's the help or Fred looking at guys and I'm like oh god like this is awful you lose the second quarter 35 30 you allow 35 there in the second quarter you know and now you're down by nine at the break but you're it's less than 10 it's the new NBA you should be able to score well the Raptors can't shoot threes to save their life so it feels a lot larger when it's a nine point deficit and in the third Every time, and actually, you know what? Forget that. In the second half alone, they got it up to 16. Raptors cut it to nine, and we're like, oh, they're coming back. Nope, they got it back up to 14. And then it's it was that. The entire second half, it was that. I think the lowest it got was eight, maybe seven once. But that was it. Defensively, they couldn't get consecutive stops. Offensively, they couldn't make shots. Raptor fans... The Raptors started the game, let me, let me first off, they lost the third quarter by two, 30-28, and it was 30-30 in the fourth, so they really never had any sort of comeback. They started the game 0 of 10 from the field, but that's not the bad part. They were 0 of 7 from three. Seven of their 10 first shots were from distance, and they couldn't make a single one. Meanwhile, Kuzma's getting the first 10 of the game. It was a sign of things to come. Let's talk to you about these player stats. Because even they weren't pretty. Jakob Pertl, 
Easily the best Raptor. Well, him and OG, I guess, were the best Raptors today. Jakob did his job as usual. 23 points, 13 rebounds, 4 assists, 8 of 9 from the field, 7 of 7 from the free throw line. Okay, that's changed fast. That was, wasn't he like 3 of 3 in the last game too? I don't know. He had 3 steals, 2 blocks. He was a plus 9. Fantastic. Fred Van Vliet, I scratched my head because he was a plus 15 while well, he was on the floor. 14 points, 3 boards, 8 assists, but shot 5 of 17. This is a lot. I mean, didn't he shoot like 1 of 11 from 3 last game? He shot 2 of 11 today. 2 of 2 from the line. He had a couple steals. So I'm not saying he was the reason they lost, but look. Your guards got to make shots, and that's the problem with the Raptors. They don't have guys that can make shots like that. They really don't. And their guys that can, struggled. Gary, struggled. Fred, struggled. OG was great. But that was it. They, the Raptors lost the three-point battle by five. Do the math. That's a 15-point loss. Differential. It's not good. You know? Fred, uh, Scotty Barnes... I thought he was aggressive at times. I just really don't like about Scotty sometimes when he misses his shot and there's a little bit of contact. He's fine when it's up in the air, when it's on the rim, but the moment it falls off, looks to the official and loses it. I'm like, Scotty, get back on D and don't allow the transition defense. But he's so busy yapping the official. 14 points, three boards, five assists, shot six of 15 from the field, two of two from the line, 0 of three from three. Not a great Scotty night. Defensively, the whole team was terrible. I, I don't know. I've lost it sometimes. You know, they play those two games against the um, who was it? Well, they played the game against the, uh, the the Pistons, where albeit it's the Pistons, they only allowed ninety one, right? And you're thinking, okay, with Yak Pertle defensively, things have changed. Now nah, they give him one hundred and nineteen today. Nothing a bit, nothing against Yak. I just felt that like the Raptors were getting blown by left and right all night long. Blow by, blow by, blow by. And when, it's, and when they're not, they're wide open threes. Or it's a blow by and a kick out for three and it's wide open because you got to get the help defense over. Pascal Siakam, he had a double-double and they were trying to hype that on the, on the broadcast. He had 13 points, 11 boards, 6 assists on 6 of 16 shooting, 1 of 5 from 3. I'm sorry, but that's not a good night. And Pascal's plus minus was pretty bad. He was a minus 10. Not great. OG, phenomenal night. Back-to-back really good games from OG and Anobi. 26 points, 3 boards, couple assists, 9 of 16 from the field, 4 of 4 from the free throw line, 4 of 9 from distance, had 2 steals and a block. But again, defensively, the whole Raptors team sucked. You know, you, you, well, Kuzma had, tw- uh, had 30, Porzingis had 25, even Gafford on the inside had 18. How many offensive boards did he have? Only 3. Um, where's Beal? He only had 15 on 5 of 14 shooting, but he was 3 of 4 from distance. Let's get to the bench. And a lot of the talk has been, well, with all these great players, you know, who's going to go to the bench? Okay, it's going to be Gary. All right, fine. The bench unit tonight was damn near abysmal. And this is the problem with the Toronto Raptors. People love to hate Nick Nurse, and I've been accustomed, I've been part of that at some point, with the minutes being really heavy for the Raptors. What did the starters play? Well, Jakob Jakob only played uh, 31. Fred played 39. Uh, Scotty 35, Pascal 39, and OG 38. Their top minute guy was Porzingis at 35 minutes. You know why that is? The top guy off the bench was thir- was 17 minutes was Gary Trent. But I can't fault Nick Nurse for that. Gary Trent played 17 minutes. He was a minus 26. Chris Boucher had some energy. But in 13 minutes was a minus 16. Precious Achua, the dude looks all out of it, man. I don't know what is going on with Precious. The move to the bench, the move of having Jakob in front of him, he just looks off. In 12 minutes, he was a minus 15. Will Barton? I think he took, what, two or three shots today and missed them both? Yeah. Seven minutes was a minus 10. The bench gave you nothing. Your top scorer off the bench was, well, Chris Boucher at 12. Your next best was Gary at four. He was two of seven from the field, Took two threes, missed both. That's why Nick Nurse had to play those starters. But down the stretch, you're not going to get that big push because they're playing these heavy minutes. It's rough. Team stats. Raptors shot 45% from the field, 27% from three. 
from distance. I mean, you made you were nine for thirty-three. It's not good enough. This is the new NBA, but it's been the story of the Raptors' year. You can't shoot the three. It really has been. No matter how open you are, they have not been able to hit threes. And in this day and age, you have to be able to. They shot 51% from the field, 47% from three. They made 15 threes. That's why the Raptors lost this game. They can't shoot, they can't shoot the three. They can't defend the three. They're allowing dribble drives all over the place. It's rough. And somehow the Raptors shot 100% from the free throw line. 17 of 17. They shot 79% of the field and you still lost by 11. You're also minus 12 in the fast break. Lots of negatives from today's game. There's a couple positives. Obviously, OG and Yak. But if this team wants any sort of home playoff game, they got to put wins together. But the problem is, and I hate to say this, that, oh, they're starting to play better ball. They were 8-2 in their last 10. Look, we are nearly 65 games into the year. This is what the team is. Next up for the Raptors, like I said, they take on the Wizards again. It's on Saturday at 5 o'clock in D.C. to wrap up the two-game miniseries away from Scotiabank Arena before the Raptors hit, hit the West Coast to take on the Denver Nuggets after that. All right, so you know what, guys? That's going to do it for this one. You enjoyed the video and not the game because it was frustrating from start to finish. Smack the like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button. If you not already, comment down below your thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. Would you like? Would you not like? From today's game for the Toronto Raptors. Twitter and Instagram links are down below. So follow up. Send me a DM, guys. Do all that great stuff. The Discord link and the all-new TikTok link is down below. And I've seen we getting some followers on there. I'd like to see that thing keep rolling on the TikTok page. All right. As uh, we try and build the following on there as well. And I will talk to you guys, Jay's edition on Wednesday, wrapping up this pa this past week's games, including today's game against the Pirates. And as for the Leafs, they're in action tonight, down one nothing in the end of the first period against Calgary. Please, can we get a win? I don't want to stay up late and have them lose. Please. And as for the Raptors, like we said, they're back in action on Saturday as they take on the Wizards again in D.C. Five o'clock tip off there. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and not the game today. We'll talk to you guys then.